Hello guys and welcome to this new video. As you might have heard, Fusion 20 is finally here and is packed with powerful new features. We're talking about a new EXR workflow, native CryptoMath support, deep compositing, a built-in vector work tool and a lot more. This video kicks off a short series where we'll dive into these updates one by one and today we're starting with Vector Warp. Alright, so the first thing that you want to keep in mind is that you have to generate vectors before using Vector Warp. And you can do that by using the optical flow node as I've done here in my comp. As you can see, I've chosen the classic method. I could have chose the advanced one, which is way faster because it runs on the GPU um, and the classic doesn't, but I mean, the classic one still produces the best results. Uh, especially if you're using the classic method, I suggest that you pre-calculate an EXR sequence with zip compression and 32-bit float depth. All right, so as you can see here, I have my vectors in the AUX channels. So, um, as you can see, when created, vector warp will set the reference frame to the current frame. So, for example, if I move the playhead and create a vector warp, as you can see now, the re reference frame is 1025. But let's choose uh, the uh, actual reference frame, which can be this one. All right, so we have a few operations that we can choose from. Let me try to explain what they do, even though there's no documentation yet for this tool, so just keep that in mind. So generate warp, the tool will only generate the warp data, which is a UV pass. Uh, generate warp plus map will generate the warp data and apply that warp data onto the incoming image here in this input. Then we have apply warp map, which will not generate the warp data, take that warp data from a different vector warp and apply the warping to the incoming input, which is uh, always this one. And then we have an warp, which is there for stabilization. So, for example, you can generate the warping and then use another vector warp to just uh, apply the vector data. That can be useful if you want to do something in between here, like, for example, using a vector uh, transform to basically uh, smooth the UV pass which would mean basically applying a blur to the UV pass. Let me show you what I mean by that. So this is the UV pass. We can blur that. Or you can transform that uh, UV pass by scaling X, Y or rotating it as you want and you can attenuate the UV if, if you need. I'm not sure why this is here, to be honest. I will wait the documentation for this. All right, let's keep things simple and let's use one single node to do both things so we can connect our... Um, we can connect our NASA logo here and let's go to the reference frame and as you can see uh, the warping is applying as expected it's quite slow so we can do something about that we have this handy region here which can be set to only calculate the region that we are defining so for example here let's see how it goes It's much faster now. As you can see here, we have these harsh warping and we can prevent that by using this handy smooth UV slider. We can set it to 10 to basically blur the warp data. As um, right now, the vector warp is acting as a merge. 
Uh, and personally, I don't really like that. Uh, luckily, we have these merge warp over background checkbox that we can uncheck so we can merge it um, ourselves so that we have more control over the uh, image. So let's uh, have a preview here and see um, and see the result. All right, as you can see, we have a great result. We can make it a little bit better by doing so. Before that, I want to set this to um, overlay. We want this brightness contrast to be enabled and this other one to be enabled as well. So we get this result here. So as you can see, we have a great result out of the vector warp. Right, so there's one thing that I think it's missing from the vector warp, which is the STMAP output, which could be very handy. So I made a tool for that. And let me show you how it works. It's called vector warp to STMAP. It takes the UV data and convert it into an STMAP. So I can now use an STMapper to basically uh, have the same result as before. As you can see, we have the same result. Also, we can use the STMAP to generate more motion vectors. In this case, it makes not much sense because we have motion vectors here. So, uh, but anyway, we can use the STMAP to vectors to basically generate vectors from the STMAP and we can use that to generate a vector motion blur, for example. We can either change these to uh, red and green or we can use this one for copying that data into here. It's a bit too much right now because it was uh, a slow-mo footage which I sped up and so I can attenuate the vectors by a factor of four, I would say. This way we can have a great uh, motion blur result. So as you can see, we have the exact same uh, warping with the motion blur right now. So this is one thing that I wanted to point out if you're working with vector warp and longer footage, let's say more than 100 frames, I will highly suggest to pre-render the vector warp. That will save you a lot of time. So there's one more thing that I wanted to show you, and it's the unwarp mode in the vector warp. So as I've done before, I pre-calculated the vectors and saved an EXR sequence and here is it, my sequence with the vectors in the AUX channels. And I'm using the vector warp this time uh, with the unwarp operation. The reference frame is 1066. And I'm basically uh, only calculating this region as I've done before. So I've pre rendered uh, the uh, vector warp so that you can see it real time. As you can see, we are basically stabilizing the whole footage to that reference frame and it's doing really good. So how is this useful? By, um, yeah, uh, what I've done next is I made a frequency separation and I've used a paint node to paint only on the high frequencies and plus them back so I could remove the skin imperfections. So here's the before and here's the after. And then uh, using this bunch of rotors, I'm using the ML Beauty macro, which I'm not sure is on reactor, but if it's not, 
it will. Uh, and I'm using those rotos to basically further uh, smoothen the skin. I'm clearly overdoing it right now, but it's just for the sake of this tutorial. Next, I'm multiplying this result so that I can only keep the smoothened skin. Right, so basically now I'm uh, using another vector warp to warp the skin onto the original footage. So here's the before and here's the after. All right, so there is one last thing that I wanted to show you and it's about masking. So um, what I'm talking about is this. So let's say that we have this footage here, right? And let's say that we have this text and we don't want this to happen. Uh, while the girl passes on top of the text, it smears it because of the vectors. So we can mask it. And let me show you how this is done. So this is not something that happens in the vector warp because uh, what we have to do in the masking happens in the vectors. So let's say that we have uh, this footage here and we are generating vectors using the optical flow. So what we have to do is to basically using a copy aux we have to move the vector data in RGB so that we can apply a clean plate where we have these uh, mask. Let me show you what the mask do. So the mask is loosely around the girl swinging. And so what we want to do in the clean plate is to pipe that into the garbage mat so that we basically punch a hole in the vectors and all that we have to do is to basically fill that hole using the fill in the clean plate so i have the vectors rendered out so i can show you better and as you can see we have that hole filled in for the whole length of my footage and the result is this one Right, I think this wraps it up for today. This is all I have to share about the Vector Warp. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Bye bye.